chasing the police every single day. government shut down or not, the police state will continue to flourish. Make no mistake, even if the government state shut down the police and warfare states will continue to lay waste to freedom and liberty. By the Free Thought Project, December 25, 2018. The government has shut down again. Try, at least, Parts of the government have temporarily shut down over President Trump's demand for a $5 billion border wall. Yet while these political games dominate news headlines, send the stock market into a nosedive, and put more than 800,000 federal employees at risk of having to work without pay, nothing about this government shutdown will diminish the immediate and very real dangers of the American police state with its roadside strip searches, government surveillance, biometric databases, citizens being treated like terrorists, imprisonments for criticizing the government, national ID cards, SWAT team raids, censorship, forcible blood draws and DNA extract ions, private prisons, weaponized drones, red light cameras, tasers, active shooter drills, police misconduct and government corruption. Shut down or not, war will continue. Drone killings will continue. Surveillance will continue. Censorship and persecution of anyone who criticizes the government will continue. The government's efforts to label dissidents as extremists and terrorists will continue. Police shootings will continue. Highway robbery meted out by government officials will continue. Corrupt government will continue. Profit-driven prisons will continue. And the militarization of the police will continue. Indeed, take a look at the programs and policies that are not affected by a government shutdown, and you'll get a clearer sense of the government's priorities, which have little to do with serving taxpayers and everything to do with amassing money, power, and control. Not even NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command that tracks Santa Claus route across the globe, will have its surveillance efforts curtailed one iota. Surveillance will continue unabated. On any given day, whether you're walking through a store, driving your car, checking email, or talking to friends and family on the phone, you can be sure that some government agency, whether the NSA or some other entity, is listening in and tracking your behavior. Police have been outfitted with a litany of surveillance gear, from license plate readers and cell phone tracking devices to biometric data recorders. Technology now makes it possible for the police to scan passers-by in order to detect the contents of their pockets, purses, briefcases, etc. Full-body scanners, which perform virtual strip searches of Americans traveling by plane, have gone mobile, with roving police vans that peer into vehicles and buildings alike including homes. Coupled with the nation's growing network of real-time surveillance cameras and facial recognition software, soon there really will be nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Government spying will continue unabated. Government shutdown or not, the National Security Agency, NSA, with its $10.8 billion Black Ops annual budget, will continue to spy on every person in the United States who uses a computer or phone using programs such as PRISM and SkiScore. By cracking the security of all major smartphones, including iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry devices, NSA agents harvest such information as contacts, text messages, and location data. And then there are the NSA agents who will continue to use and abuse their surveillance powers for personal means, to spy on girlfriends, lovers, and first dates. Global spying will continue unabated. The NSA's massive surveillance network, what the Washington Post refers to as a $500 billion espionage empire, will continue to span the globe and target every single person on the planet who uses a phone or a computer. The NSA's Echelon program intercepts and analyzes virtually every phone call, fax, and email message sent anywhere in the world. In addition to carrying out domestic surveillance on peaceful political groups such as Amnesty International, Greenpeace and several religious groups, Echelon has also been a keystone to the government's attempts at political and corporate espionage. Egregious searches will continue unabated. 
under the pretext of protecting the nation's infrastructure, roads, mass transit systems, water and power supplies, telecommunications systems and so on, against criminal or terrorist attacks, Transportation Security Administration, TSA, task forces, comprised of federal air marshals, surface transportation security inspectors, transportation security officers, behavior detection officers and explosive detection canine teams, will continue to do random security sweeps of nexuses of transportation, including ports, railway and bus stations, airports, ferries, and subways. Sweep tactics include the use of X-ray technology, pat-downs and drug-sniffing dogs, among other things. The undermining of the Constitution will continue unabated. America's so-called War on Terror, which it has relentlessly pursued since 9-11, has chipped away at our freedoms, unraveled our Constitution and transformed our nation into a battlefield, thanks in large part to such subversive legislation as the USA Patriot Act and National Defense Authorization Act. These laws which completely circumvent the rule of law and the constitutional rights of American citizens, reorienting our legal landscape in such a way as to ensure that martial law, rather than the rule of law, our U.S. Constitution, becomes the map by which we navigate life in the United States will continue to be enforced. Militarized policing will continue unabated. Thanks to federal grant programs allowing the Pentagon to transfer surplus military supplies and weapons to local law enforcement agencies without charge, police forces will continue to be transformed from peace officers into heavily armed extensions of the military, complete with jackboots, helmets, shields, batons, pepper spray, stun guns, assault rifles, body armor, miniature tanks and weaponized drones. Having been given the green light to probe, poke, pinch, taser, search, seize, strip and generally manhandle anyone they see fit in almost any circumstance, all with the general blessing of the courts, America's law enforcement officials, no longer mere servants of the people entrusted with keeping the peace, will continue to keep the masses corralled, under control, and treated like suspects and enemies rather than citizens. SWAT team raids will continue unabated. With more than 80,000 SWAT team raids carried out every year on unsuspecting Americans for relatively routine police matters and federal agencies laying claim to their own law enforcement divisions, the incidence of botched raids and related casualties will continue to rise. Nationwide, SWAT teams will continue to be employed to address an astonishingly trivial array of criminal activity or mere community nuisances including angry dogs, domestic disputes, improper paperwork filed by an orchid farmer, and misdemeanor marijuana possession. Overcriminalization will continue unabated. The government bureaucracy will continue to churn out laws, statutes, codes, and regulations that reinforce its powers and value systems and those of the police state and its corporate allies, rendering the rest of us petty criminals. The average American now unknowingly commits three felonies a day, thanks to this overabundance of vague laws that render otherwise innocent activity illegal. Consequently, small farmers who dare to make unpasteurized goat cheese and share it with members of their community will continue to have their farms raided. The shadow government aka the deep state, aka the police state, aka the military-industrial complex, aka the surveillance state complex will continue unabated. This corporatized, militarized, entrenched bureaucracy that is fully operational and staffed by unelected officials will continue to call the shots in Washington, D.C., no matter who sits in the White House or controls Congress. By government, I'm not referring to the highly partisan, two-party bureaucracy of the Republicans and Democrats. Rather, I'm referring to government with a capital G, the entrenched deep state that is unaffected by elections, unaltered by populist movements, and has set itself beyond the reach of the law. These issues are not going away. They are the backbone of an increasingly aggressive authoritarian government, formed by an unholy alliance between the megacorporations with little concern for the constitution and elected officials and bureaucrats incapable or unwilling to represent the best interests of their constituents. When it comes right down to it, no matter how long a government shutdown lasts, 
it will remain business as usual in terms of the government's unceasing pursuit of greater powers and control. So where do we go from here? If public opposition, outright challenges, and a government shutdown don't stop or even slow down the police state, what's to be done? Do what you must to survive. Go to work, take care of your family, pay off your debts. All the while you're doing those things which allow you to survive from one day to the next, plan for the future and strive for freedom. Pay attention to the political structure that is being created in the shadows, the economic system that is chaining us down with debt, and the feudal, fascist society born out of the marriage of government and big business. Avoid the propaganda mills posing as news sources. Express your outrage, loudly and tirelessly, to the government's incursions on our freedoms. Act locally taking issue with any and every encroachment on your rights, no matter how minor, whether it's a ban on goat cheese or installations of red light cameras at intersections and on school buses because reclaiming our rights from the ground up, starting locally and trickling up, remains our only hope. Resistance may seem futile, it will be hard, and as I make clear in my book Battlefield America, The War on the American People, there will inevitably be a price to pay for resisting the emerging tyranny, but to the extent that you are able, resist. About John W. Whitehead Constitutional attorney and author John W. Whitehead is founder and president of the Rutherford Institute. His new book Battlefield America, The War on the American People, Select Books, 2015, is available online at www.amazon.com. Whitehead can be contacted at John W. at Rutherford.org. Hey, Shara Connie, this is Shara Connie Copwatch. I am using any video here with under fair use if you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc. And please donate. I do not make money from YouTube. And uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.